Share Shootout brought to you by Lion of Africa Insurance, ensuring South Africa's future. This is the most vicious stock picking show on television. I'm Bruce Whitfield's judge, jury and executioner here on Share Shootout. You're watching CNBC Africa first in business worldwide. Now, can one cry underwater? Why does pizza come in a round why does round pizza come in a square box? Did the Democratic Alliance really apologize for the MTN airtime vouchers campaign by sending a please call me to Lutuli House? Now we don't know the answers to any of these very, very difficult questions, but what we know is we have got a hell of a show for you this evening. It's not even a show, it's more like a showdown of epic proportions. It's the ultimate brothers shootout. Kind of like Michael and Ralph Schumacher meeting in two different Formula One teams in uh, in, in Formula One. Or it could be like the Williams sisters playing a tennis match final against each other at Roland Garros. This is exactly what we're doing, except, yeah, we don't have the short skirts. and There may be some screaming, but not the kind of screaming that you get at Roland Garros. We've got a Williams pairing of our own. For now, their score is still tied at love, love. We've got Roger and Rowan Williams. Roger has been champion, if you'll come in to me, Roger, for the last two weeks, who also boasts a perfect record of two wins out of two appearances. But Rowan, his baby brother, has also got a perfect record because he hasn't played yet. Over the next 30 minutes, both of our stock-picking brothers will fight it out for their mother's pride and also the share shootout king title. And the other Williams will have to be, well, sent to where Williamses go when they become has-beens. Both of our guests have pre-picked three shares. They're keeping those close to their chests. Neither knows, as far as we know, uh, what their other holds. Maybe they've shared because there is blood between them. But uh, what they have to do is they have to accept at least one of their competitor stocks. And the longer they leave it, the more likely they are to have to accept something they really don't like. Each has got 30 seconds to argue their stock pick. So let's let the share shoot up begin. You are the big brother, aren't you, Roger? Yes. And, and you bring your little brother in. And there's also a third brother who's Rowan's twin. That's right. Yes. What's his name? Rupert. Lance. Lance. <laughs> it doesn't really follow with Rowan, uh, Rowan Roger, and Lance. No, it doesn't. Does Lance, is Lance an honest type of person? Has he considered changing his name um, <laughs> in, the last, uh, in the last six months or so? So whoever loses here today... We'll bring Lance in to go up against the winning brother. I think it's a great idea. I yeah. think I think it's a fabulous idea. All right. Now, Ron, you're new to this. Yes. You can either be a good sport and look up to your big brother and say, you're going to take one for the team, or you can make him go first because he's done it before. Right. Let's, uh, let's defer to Age before brother. beauty. Right. We will do it on that particular basis. Roger Williams from Centaur. Nice to see you once again. This is your third appearance. Let's see if you can stuff up your little brother. Um, you've got 30 seconds to explain to me why... Any sane person in the world would think that Sibanya Gold is a good pick right now. 30, 30 seconds start now. Sibanya Gold is uh, unbundled out of gold fields. It's, it's a gold producer with 1.2 million ounces of production capacity. And what's really good about this is it's an exceptionally cheap price. It's, it's trading at a third of Harmony's, Harmony's valuation. And um, I see it as an exceptional option on the gold and rand. If gold goes up, this thing could easily go up to 30 rand. If the rand weakens, it could further go up. And this is a great entry opportunity. I've got it on a P of under three, which is exceptional value. All right, there we go. Gold is an investment, which is controversial in itself. Sure. But Ro, new real Rubini, Dr. Doom, just this week, is saying that your brother is nuts. What do you think of Sibanya? Sibanya, so it, it's been a really interesting situation because, uh, it, as Roger mentioned, it was unbundled uh, out of gold fields. And uh, there were, I think, fairly high expectations. Uh, it's a very much a, a pure player sort of on South African gold mining as well. Um, the share started uh, at around 13 Rand, yeah. ran up to 17. It came all the way down to sort of almost 5 Rand. So it's been incredibly volatile with uh, the gold, uh, share pr gold prices. Is it an investment or is it a trading opportunity for somebody with big ones? Look, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a, a listed company and it, it produces gold which uh, people use and buy. So it is an investment opportunity. It's speculative by nature uh, of it uh, being a gold company and a gold miner. Um, but I think Roger's correct at these levels. Uh, you've, you've priced significant downside already into the stock with good optionality. Um, and I think in terms of gold, it has taken quite a, a, a big hit recently. So it's, it's, it's more 
reasonable levels than it was, obviously, at 1800. But what about the Rubini hypothesis, that gold is more likely to go to 1,000 than it is to 2,000? Well, the interesting, uh, in terms of uh, Sabanya's production costs and uh, the price it w needs to sell at in order to make a profit, I think it still breaks even. I don't have the exact figures. Roger could probably uh, tell us. Okay, let, let, let's get Roger here. Because Roger, is this mm. a punt on the gold price? Is it a punt on the rand? Or is it a punt on Neil Froenemann's ability, an old street dog of epic proportions in the gold mining industry with a reputation that precedes him for turning around tough operations? It's really a punt on all three. I think okay. you, you've pinpointed it. I'm, I think I'm not sure on the gold price. And the rand's got more optionality it could could actually weaken considerably let's say we hit a crisis could go to 18 rand but <laughs> sorry involuntary <laughs> 18 rand to the dollar of air, yes and then you, you you do the numbers and this thing could easily be worth 40 rand and you're buying it at eight five times upside and it's really i wouldn't bet the house on it but you know you put two percent in your portfolio you've got this optionality and and the risk reward ratio is exceptionally good and then in terms of expected okay. return, that's what you, you want. It's now time for Rowan to see whether or not he's prepared to be. He's been hearing your stories for the last, I don't know how long, nearly four decades, I suspect. Um, I've never shared my secrets. You've never <laughs> shared your secrets. It's the first time you're getting an insight into his brilliant brain. <laughs> so, Rowan, do you take it or do you shoot it down? Because considering you have to accept at least one of his uh, three shares, none of which you've seen, his others could be even more precarious than Sabania Gold. Do you take it? I'll take this one, yes. You'll take this one, Sibanya yeah. Gold. You were also nice on your <laughs> first day in. Um, <laughs> brothers in arms this evening. Okay, so uh, Rowan, you right. now have got an idea of how the game works. I do. The only place I would think it, that is possibly more hairy than gold mining in a tough consumer environment right now would be somewhere like, I don't know, motor cars. Second-hand motor cars are a pretty tough space yeah. to be in at the moment. We've got a weak rand. Car prices are likely to start going up. Why then? in this environment, in 30 seconds, explain to me combined motor holdings. Why would you like it? So it's a fo focused motor retail group, uh, has very good fundamentals uh, in our point of view. Uh, the results uh, to the end of February were excellent. Uh, off the back of 8% uh, revenue growth, they were able to grow operating profit by 34%. They have a return on equity of 25%. High dividend yields, a PE of around seven. And uh, they've diversified the earnings stream somewhat, so much more defensive than they have been in the past. And I think are able to weather a cyclical downturn in the uh, motor retail industry. Okay, combined motor holdings. Show him how this game is played. Take him down, Roger. Or not, as the case might be. Yeah, listen, I mean, the motor car industry is highly cyclical. If, if you look at, at the volumes, they go up and down with the interest rate cycle. Um, what my key concern is motor vehicle sales at the moment are at a very high level. They're, they're You're selling 53 to, to 55,000 units a month. Mm. Yeah, I think that's maybe exceeding the levels of 2007 or mm -hmm. 2008. And now my question is how much better can it get from here versus how much worse can it get? So I think the key switch factor are interest rates. Now, with the RAND weakening, you know, the repo rate, you know, the bets are, listen, maybe they're not going to decrease it, maybe they're going to increase interest rates. There was, there was some stats being banded about recently that before the last MPC meeting, which was only a couple of weeks ago, we had a 30% chance of an interest rate cut. Uh, yeah. Because of the weakness mm. in the currency and the p then what it's looks like around. to be the persistent weakness of the currency, we've now got a 60% increase before the end of this year of an interest rate exactly. increase. That turns combined motor holdings into something of a liability, doesn't it? That's, well, let's say motor vehicle sales were down 20% next year, which is not unreasonable mm -hmm. um, in, a, in a recessionary environment. What would that do to combined motor holdings? So they... Uh, the last time there was a cyclical downturn was in 2008 and 2009. Mm. Uh, they, their margins did get hit substantially. I think they're a very different business today that they have cut their costs relative to, to revenue significantly. That's why you saw this massive increase in operating profits. They are at uh, operating margins of around 3.4%, yeah. which is, is, is high. Uh, but they've diversified the business. There's a significant car park in that the, because of the higher motor sales over the last five years, you've got a, a, a big base of, of vehicles that need servicing. So they're seeing a big increase in the, the parts and servicing. So it's got nice annuity business. income coming Absolutely, through. Absolutely, yeah. yes. 
All right. Uh, so that is still going to come through. All right. Can you take this one, or do you shoot it down based on all of the negatives that you pointed out so eloquently, Roger? I wouldn't buy it because I think the downside risk is, is much greater than the upside potential. And uh, personally, I'm very wary of interest rate cyclicals. I classify mm. this as an interest rate cyclical. Regardless of what management has done, you know, if interest rates go up or vehicle sales drop, this you've got, you've got a fall. scenario where interest rates go up, where vehicle prices go up because of imported components, yeah. because of imported m finished motor vehicles. Suddenly, numbers start declining, interest rates are going up, it becomes a really difficult play. Exactly. Is there enough fat in the business to guard them against that, Ron? I believe there is in terms of uh, the, 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 the move away from the purely cyclical motor retail business. At this point, though, it doesn't matter what you believe, it matters what he believes. Roger, <laughs> teach your brother how the game is played. So uh, I'll shoot that one down. You're going to shoot it down. This is how you see it's mean. <laughs> it's mean. Did you once yeah. steal his lunch money? I'm just trying to understand what the, what the family dynamics are here. You, you're being very polite. Just and well his lunch, not his lunch money. Oh, excellent. Well, <laughs> let's see whether or not you can take his lunch this evening because that uh, would create an interesting dynamic if we could have twins on next week's show. That would be quite fun. So try and lose, Roger. Um, I'll I, try. I, yeah, I know it's not, shoot it's, me down. It's, not, it's not in your nature. Um, although you are being very challenging in your picks because not one of the companies that you've chosen this evening is worth more than six billion rand. You've chosen some really small companies. Um, you've chosen adventurous companies. Please explain to me what is the appeal then, in 30 seconds, of Afrimat. Afrimat has really exceptional management. Um, during the 2008 boom, they raised money and didn't make acquisitions. That gave them an exceptionally strong balance sheet. And during the downturn, when everyone else was struggling, they were acquiring companies on the cheap. And their latest results, the earnings were up over 20%. They're hitting record earnings. And management are exceptional, exceptionally shrewd, diversified the, the business. Also, they've got an operational team which can take over companies, turn them around, and a marketing team which can sell the product. Okay, there we go. What was his nickname when you were growing up? So, uh, Rog the Dodge is okay. well known. Are you, are you, you're, feeling it, you're feeling it this <laughs> evening. He's dodging, isn't he? Yes. Okay. So, Afrimat, can right. you... Uh, because also, it's a fatal error on the show, incidentally, to be too nice. You know, yeah, you understand uh, that absolutely. nicely. Absolutely. So let's start. Let's stop goading the <laughs> opponent to be <laughs> nasty. What? Now I'm becoming like the referee between the brothers. I don't think so. <laughs> shoot him down. I'll shoot him down. So, Afrimat, I think uh, it has some virtues as a business. But one thing it has done, it's grown quite aggressively by acquisition. So, if you start to unpick the earnings growth a little bit, uh, there was a favorable uh, tax rate change and actually their, their operating profit only grew around 14%. They have been issuing shares as they've been making acquisitions. Uh, so that's dilutive. Mm -hmm. I guess it's grown through acquisitions. So it's hard to strip out the acquisitive growth from the organic growth uh, I in detail. So you would need to look at that to see how much of it's actually underlying organic growth in the businesses. Uh, they, they also just headline earnings uh, for trading in plant and machinery and that's the adjustment you make to headline earnings but that kind of business I would argue it's a big part of their operations. Okay now you would read his body language a lot better than I do but I can see a smug face when I see a smug face and he's looking smug. Back at your brother. Yeah listen I mean the construction industry has been in a massive downturn and I acknowledge that the core businesses haven't been growing that well but I think brilliant management is management to really takes a business and makes a plan to grow the business. And what they've done is they've really, through acquisitions, through shrewd planning, managed to grow a business in an exceptionally bad environment. I mean, the construction industry is a, is a disaster. And they, they, you've they got, you've got to acknowledge that then, Rowan. I mean, in terms no. of their ability to weather probably one of the most tumultuous storms in the last 10 to 15 years in the construction sector. They have, they've, they've done a fair job at that. Um, we're not sure what the outlook is. I don't think it's going to grow particularly strongly. So if the acquisition spree starts to slow down, you might see a slowdown in the, their earnings growth. Okay, uh, so tell us what you really think. So are you taking it or are you shooting it down? No, I think I'm going to shoot it down. It's on a, you know, it's on a P of 12 and a half. I think it's, it's fully valued for what it is. Well, there we go. It's a forward P of 9. 
And he you know, if you, if you look at the potential, has he already shot it down? He shot it down. Okay. Yeah, it, you, you can keep protesting as much as you like, but he's getting into it. The, the family gene pool is kicking in and he's learning just how the game works. You goaded um, him. You goaded him. I encouraged. I, 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 I've encouraged I'm, him to I'm be outspoken. So, Rowan Williams then from Nitrogen Fund, uh, yes. from, from, from fund, Nitrogen fund Managers. Um, this is a tough sell. This is quite a tough sell. This is a tough sell. It's a big company. It has been quite successful in the last two to three years Correct, after yes. years of look, being an absolute dog. Um, but we need the boxes that everything we consume comes in. Tell me about NAMPAC and why in 30 seconds you would take it. So despite uh, the recent uh, earnings disappointments and their interim earnings, we still like the medium term potential of the business. Uh, mainly the X factor of the business is the expansion into Africa. They are the leading packaging group in Africa. Uh, they're seeing exceptional sales growth and margin growth uh, in their African business. It now makes up, including exports, 28% of their earnings. If you add the smaller UK business, about 40% of their earnings are in a Rand Hedge type market. And okay. It's Your 30 seconds are up. We've got to be sticky because he's a stickler for the rules, no, especially when it enough. comes to, to family. Afrimat. Now, if you don't accept this, I mean, I beg your pardon, this is NAMPAC. NAMPAC. If you don't accept NAMPAC, then you've got to accept number three. You might not want to do that. So you've got to think really carefully and strategically about whether or not the last set of results was an anomaly in an otherwise improving trajectory for NAMPAC. So I think NAMPAC has been a very disappointing company, you know, prior to the last two years. And now everyone's got onto this African story and said, listen, you know, now it's a buy, let's pay a 17 PE. But the fact is the local business is not doing that greatly and it's highly competitive. My big question is the African side are, is earning great margins. I think it's 17 or 18 percent. Not quite is that going to hold up in the long term? You know, because let's say Coca-Cola or SA Breweries are their customers. And what they do is they're saying, listen, look how much you're making. We know how much it costs. Let's get a competitor to bid against you. And, and really, they're not, they don't have strong negotiating power. They're, they're, they're really a commodity. How would you argue against that? So uh, I think they've got a market leading position in the markets in Africa that they've entered. They've oh. entered them aggressively. They've been in investing aggressively. They continue to invest aggressively. So they're putting up those competitive moats. Uh, they've got, I think there's significant demand. If you look at uh, the Angola canning line, it's in two years it reached full capacity. They're needing to it expand It took them five that. years to build it. Certainly, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, that shows that, you the yeah. challenges. I think yeah. that's a positive. Well, that, that's a positive in terms of, of yeah, Roger's yeah. argument for competitors exactly. to come in and cut that's you right. down. Yes. So, Roger, you need at this point to either accept it or shoot it down, considering he has got another ace up his sleeve, or maybe it's a joker. Um, how risky are you feeling? How risk averse are you feeling this evening? Do you take it or do you shoot it down? I see you are pondering hard. You know, I think the P is too rich for the growth. You know, 17 P and it just mm. grew earnings 4%. You, you, you notice when he talks about you, he talks about historical PEs. When he talks about his own picks, he talks about forward well, PEs. Yeah. But it's part of the game. Carry it's on. NAMPAC's not growing, so that's the same thing. So <laughs> it's an 18 P. <laughs> are you shooting it down or are you down. 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 He's shooting it down. Sibling rivalry par excellence this evening here on Chair Shootout. We've got Roger and Rowan Williams. Roger is just a little older, but is he that little bit wiser than uh, Rowan, who's come on to Chair Shootout for the very first time in a fighting mood? More Chair Shootout on the other side of this.